Oh, it's getting closer. The Labor and Community Organization March on Occupy Wall Street is coming up very soon. And we'll be leaving the spot and going to cover the rally. But we didn't want to leave without talking to a few more folks that we've seen here today about why they're here, what resonates here for them, and what they're going to do with the, the energy and the ideas they're picking up in this space. I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Tell us how you want to be, your name and how you want to be identified. Well, my name is Siham Jihad. I am an activist and a humanist from Boston, and I'm also a Muslim American. Um, this, I came to Occupy Wall Street because this inspires me beyond words, and it hits me home real hard especially for someone who's been heavily involved with all the protests and the uprising of the people that have been happening in the Arab world recently. Um, despite all the, you know, the, 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 the snags that the, the government is trying to put on us and the pressure, we're here and we're here to stay. And I'm also, also want to take this back with me to Boston and tell people they cannot beat us. We are 99%. They cannot beat all of us. They cannot arrest all of us. They don't have enough jails for all of us. And also to the Arab countries, I want to let them know, we have not forgotten you. Syrians, we have not forgotten you. You're not forgotten. We don't forget about you and go have a nice supper in our lazy boy chair. We are here because we believe that this work, thank you to Tahrir Square, and we're gonna repeat this, we're gonna take back this country one city at a time, and then we're gonna, if I could clone myself, I would be in every major city in the United States and in every country that is oppressed, that needs uh, to occupy a public spot in order for them to be heard. And who is our friend here, here with? I'm Richard Williams. I'm a Army veteran, registered nurse, Black Panther, and an activist. And we're just trying to make this a better world for all of us. So you're listening to our friend speak and a wide grin is coming across your face. Why? Because I'm in solidarity with everything that she's saying. I'm just going to say it in a haiku. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the struggle for the people in the Middle East, wherever we are struggling, this is a universal problem. This is not just America. This is something that concerns we, the people of the universe. The Black Panther Party, for those who don't remember or have only seen the money media version, why are you involved in the party and is it still around today? We are celebrating our 40th anniversary this week and we are around and we're not going any place and as the young lady said, this energizes us to remain true to our core goals which were similar and continue to be similar to what's happening today. What, what are some of the goals of the Black Panther Party? Equality, justice, women's rights, children's rights. The monetary policies of this country need to change. It's not trickling down. And the middle class is in a big, big trouble. I saw the uh, film co-produced by Danny Glover and Jocelyn Barnes. Black Power mixtape recently that reminded me that we got school lunches in public schools thanks to the Black Panther Party. What other legacies do you think continue and, and what does the experience of the party have on the other side to teach or, or warn the people here? Well, one of the things that came out of the Black, party, Black Panther Party was our initial uniforms that Bobby Seale wore at the Sacramento Courthouse, the SWAT teams, if you notice, had those black uniforms and boots. That's where they got the idea from. Of course, they turned it around and tried to decimate us. But the food part, the lunch programs, and that sort of thing, we were social activities. We were not out trying to blow up buildings or kill the police. I joined the Panther Party after I did seven years in the United States Army. So violence wasn't something that I was coming back home to create. I was coming back home to make a, tr a peaceful transition to help this country be the party of all of us and make we, the people, equals. 
in, me, yeah, go ahead. In, interject. Um, there are two things that my friend here said that inspired me very, very much. Um, the first thing is that he said that the goal, or basically, or the slogan is um, equality, etc. This is the very slogan of every single Arab world, and it is. I'm, I'm quoting. Okay, freedom, um, dignity, and equality, and social justice for all. And the second thing he said about violence and you know certain stereotype, especially with the last name like mine, who wouldn't run away, jihad? But let's think about it this way: there are millions of Muslims in America. If all of us were terrorists and wanted bad for America, do you think there'll be a single building standing? Like we are here, our you know joblessness is our common enemy, and our money needs to stay here because we need it here for after school programs. We need it here for our youth. We need it here so that we can, can uh, create that spark of hope in the faces of millions who are either graduating or about to, to graduate. And they don't know what's going to happen. They're telling us that another uh, econo economical crisis is on the loom and everybody's worried. This is our common goal. The wall has got to, to come down. Main Talk, Street needs to strive. Talk a little bit about how your communities have survived under attack. The political African American community in this country, the Muslim American, Arab American community in this country. People here may still have quite a challenge ahead of themselves uh, in, when it comes to enduring repression and pushback from, from the status quo and the powers that be. Who knows how long even people will be able to stay in this, in this square. Have you got any thoughts about advice, perhaps, coming from the people you know so well? Well, there is this one initiative that I decided to do in spite of whatever else is going on. I'm going back and occupying Boston. Um, I'm going back tonight and occupying Boston, but I'm taking every single one of um, our youth, well, we, we call it the young Muslim professionals. I'm taking every single one of them in there. We're setting up a tent and we're telling people, we're here to stay. Your problem is my problem. I am as much an American as you are. And you know what? Like me or hate me. If you have a problem, come and ask me. If you have a question, I'm very happy, but do not hold on to the stereotype because that's against the very reason why you are occupying. Aren't you afraid? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I believe in this and I am ready to go to the ends of the earth for this. I agree with your sister. Right on. Advice? Continue. Don't give up the fight. Because the things that we, and I say this, we as black people were fighting for, it's trickling down now to the middle class. The chickens are seriously coming home to roost. And the things that they looked at us and said, well, you guys need to go out and work. Well, I am a registered nurse, but there are people getting out of Harvard, Yale, all of the good schools that cannot find a job. And a lot of them are out here today. So it's a common fight. It's not just me against the white folks or me against the Muslim people. It's about us as a, we a people united across this universe to make this a better world to live in for our children, grandchildren, and I have both, to have some hope for the future. And maybe if we had better ears and eyes and could more closely and more quickly see what was happening to people that we didn't think was were like us, we might be smarter and better informed about what's coming down the pike. Just a thought. That's why we have independent media. That's why we're glad to be with you today. And I want to thank once again everybody who has made this possible. This is a collective. The crew behind this broadcast has acted as a collective too. And we've done it with your help. So keep your contributions coming in. Thanks for watching Free Speech TV. A whole lot more coverage from Occupy Wall Street coming up.